Welcome back to another episode of the Skits and Giggles podcast. For this one, we sat down with Bram from SR Cycles to get to know the story and the brain behind his steel creations. Unlike some of our other guests, Bram's journey starts with the conviction that yes, of course he can make his own bikes. It's just a matter of finding out how and the number of different side projects along the way. Over the years, Bram has created some eye-catching frames and we get to hear all about his approach and philosophy to making bikes, his experiments, successful and otherwise, dual flex pivots and a missed opportunity for a patent, and of course, what the future holds for SR Cycles and getting more people riding his creations. For more information about this episode and the Skits and Giggles podcast, you can just follow the links in the description. To support the podcast, please share this episode with your writing buddies or just leave us a five-star rating on your favorite platform. That's it for now, Skigglers. Have fun with this episode. We had a good giggle and this is the Skits and Giggles podcast and we welcome Bram from SR Cycles. How are you doing tonight? I'm great. Thanks. Thanks. Um, see, I'm, I'm just came from a holiday, so I'm dealing with the, uh, with the holiday blues. But other than that, we're, 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 we're good. How about you guys? Oh, I'm doing great. Bryson, how are you doing? Rolling. I was riding last night. I'm still stoked. Good. Good. So tonight I want to start with a feeling. And I want to hear your take on the feeling of riding your own bike on holiday. Because recently we had a guest on, Reto, who made his own bike at home, a carbon bike even. He wanted to take it uh, on holiday, but unfortunately didn't quite get there. But you make your own bikes and you actually just took it on your holiday that you just talked about. So how does that feel? It feels great, uh, but I must say it's obviously not my first bike, so I'm more confident in hoping that the head tube doesn't fall off or and anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you just, yeah, it's just knowing that you built this and then that it also works well, because it might as well go the other way that you think, oh, I fucked up on this geometry or, or, or whatnot. But again, not the first bike, so I kind of knew what I was in for and... Well, I guess it gets annoying when it wouldn't work, but no, it's it's really good, and I'm I keep being surprised by how well the bike rides, climbs, because um, it has so much traction. And then it, this is the first bike I made with a coil shock, and as far as I'm concerned, it's true. The rumors are true. Coil is better; it gives more support. And I used to be a guy that sticks to the floor more, but I'm so confident in popping stuff and jumping actually so and it also looks sick i mean that's the funny thing i try to to try some try to engagement with our socials so i reached out to our followers on instagram was like hey do you have any any ideas anything you want to talk about with sr cycles zero replies (laughs) apart from a couple of messages like the bike looks freaking sick (laughs) We, we want to hear more so let's go well, here's here's a twist. How do, how does the bike compare to the first one you built? The first one, the first one takes us back to uh, I think 2015. So I got into well, no, let's take it slightly more back. Uh, I never really intended on making my own bike. It was somebody else's idea. He said, "Hey, you make things. Why don't you make your own bike?" And I thought, "Huh." I guess I can do that. <laughs> but then uh, I wasn't really equipped for that. So I think I just played around with a lot of concepts. And then, and that is, <laughs> that's part of my whole journey. So if we look at the first bike, it's a bike I never intended to build. It was a fully rigid bike. Uh, because I wanted to try out some geometry before I commit to building the actual bike I wanted to build. Back then, I wanted to build just a proper kind of big enduro bike. For some reason, I wanted to already experiment with uh, mullet wheels. 27 didn't really get off back then, so it was looking strange. So 29 front, 26 back. Oh, Why wow, not? Yeah. <laughs> so I made a rigid 69er, let's call it. <laughs> uh, why rigid? Um, I'm not sure, but it had something to do with the frame getting 
the most stress will not having a suspension. So if it doesn't break, it should be good. <laughs> so Reasonable that, argumentation. So a rigid bike was my first bike and that actually rode great apart from not having suspension. And I must say the first time I was on it, I was riding it really slowly because you have no idea what you did right or wrong. I, I, I was sure I overheated the, the tubes. Uh, but I guess that's the nice side about brazing. <laughs> uh, and after a couple of rides, you get more confident and then you almost keep up with the guys in their full suspension bikes and just getting hammered. But, uh, yeah. So you started that as a, a geometry experiment and then what <laughs> takeaways did you get saying, okay, I was right about this and I was wrong about that. Well, back then, uh, I, w- I was riding an, an, an on one steel bike actually already, but you know, the bikes were still very small then. I just came off a KTM downhill bike. And back when I bought it in, I think, 2011, the guy recommended me, ah, no, no, a bit of a smaller frame. It's, it's better. It's more agile. If I look at the numbers, I now have 110 millimeters more reach. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think I could bike. sell it to a kid to today, and it would be a small bike. Uh, so yeah, that's, I think my, my, just my first experience that, Hey, these bigger bikes and a bit of a steeper head, you, um, sorry, CQ angle works. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think I've been growing them slowly, not so much. I think I just went pretty right in the, on the first go, just, uh, just a stack I've been working on. Did you have any inspiration for, for your creations or, you know, did you subscribe to, any philosophy in terms of, uh, um, you know, the long, low slack. Uh, I mean, that was kind of the time when Chris Porter was uh, beating many, many drums about exactly. the long, low and slack. So, so where, where do you fall in on that spectrum? No, it's definitely Chris Porter with his radical thinking. And well, what he said makes sense. And when you feel it, it just made sense. Maybe they went a bit too far, but the base, it just makes sense. <laughs> And then, well, when I started looking at bicycles, I didn't really know much other than just been, been, been riding them. But if you follow the bike industry, just what they say, they used to be all over the place. Now it's converging to a certain thing that I think it's hard to buy a bad bicycle. Also, ge- geometry wise, it's all getting, well, in my opinion now too, in the, in, in, in the good direction or they are there, right? But back then it could go it could go all that directions. So yeah, I tried something and it worked. And uh, well, as more I mean, the more and more that I read about it or thought about it, I think I well I came to an understanding. Um, I mean, I just didn't really take what the bicycle industry was saying. It was more what I thought it what would work or, or how it could work. And I tried following this. That actually leads me into the, one of the, the surprise, surprise questions I wanted to give you is <laughs> like, did you have a philosophy for when you started creating your bikes? What, uh, what you wanted out of yeah. this? So There's, you've made a few of them already, right? Yes. Yes. I'm i uh, I'm up to eight. Wow. <laughs> when I listen to other guys with less time that made, made more bikes, I think, nice. <laughs> you, you guys are doing great. All I do is think out concepts and, well, you don't really see it, but I tend to over-engineer and I want to perfect things. And that's why I don't have a lot of out- output physically. <laughs> There's a lot of concepts. <laughs> My head's full and I want to try it all out. Uh, <laughs> um, so, but I think part of my philosophy, I kind of really like steel um, because steel is real and the rest is also real, but it doesn't rhyme. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> The first bike I built, I actually, I didn't even buy the round tubes. I got the hexagonal or octagonal t- um, tubes. I thought I'm going to put in internal cables. I, I had a tapered head tube. I did some weird things because I really like a challenge. And I thought if I can do this, then we're good. I <laughs> um, Sometimes when you read about starting to uh, weld, oh, no, let me rephrase this. I don't always have a lot of time or I don't want to spend a lot of time just trying out things to try out things. I welded two tubes together. I mean, sorry, I braced two tubes together 
And I thought, practice is boring. I'm just going to start making this bike. We'll see where that goes. If it doesn't work, I'll try it, try another one. <laughs> um, so that worked. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, okay, let, let's get back to the, 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 the philosophy. I just like to, well, I like to kind of use as much steel as possible because it's heavy and I guess it's hard to make it light. Um, not that I'm the super weight weenie, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I just like a challenge, I, I guess. And, um, and some not necessarily new concepts because that hasn't been done yet or, or it is new, but yeah, when I come up with something and I think it's feasible, I try to just try that out. Your designs are definitely not generic. They're definitely on the, on the verge of like pushing what's po like maybe what's possible for for steel yeah it's kind of um, vibe i get so i have this my first full suspension had a steel rocker link and in, initially for instance i designed it uh, with a brace in the middle because i thought it's maybe not strong enough or flimsy i mean the plates are two millimeter thick sometimes i see bikes out there that might be a bit overbuilt and that's the safe side for sure and i thought let's see if this bends and it doesn't it didn't <laughs> so um, it might sound cocky when I say things like this, but maybe it's a bit, you know, like this, uh, Lotus and engineer Colin Chapman. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe the difference is that he kind of killed people with his, uh, let's build it light enough or actually too light. <laughs> I'd like to be on the edge there of trying things and don't get killed. And, and by the way, I'm riding them, you know, so. So less less fatal, fatalistic approach to uh, bike design and uh, stress testing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, I mean, I can calculate this in, in, in advance. So it's not that I'm just winging it come completely. Uh, if I design the bikes, I take them through some FEA to see what might be the problems. And yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of experience already with working with uh, with, with, with steel, let's say, and I might have a feel for it better than somebody who's completely new to making things. Yeah, maybe that's a good point to uh, to ask the question, right? So, I mean, you're not starting on a completely green field in terms of like, oh, let's just make a bike and and see what happens. You kind of know what you're doing. Uh, so, can you talk a little bit about your your, your background? That how you know what gave you the head start in, in making bikes? I mean, you just talked about FEAs and, and you know, <laughs> yeah, all yeah, these other right. acronyms, right? So, I have a feeling you know a little bit more than me about making bikes. Well, because I thought of it a lot, a lot. <laughs> um, no, so my background. I started at just as as a kid. I was always playing with Legos, making things, not just what's on the box, but what you can make with when you pour all your boxes to do to, together, right? And then. Um, when I was 16, you know, you want your motorcycle. I mean, the moped, you know, the 50cc one. A friend of my dad's, he had some old thing hanging around and it didn't work anymore and just gave it to me. So my first restoration project, great. <laughs> um, then you're 18, you want a car. And somehow I got crazy about off-road vehicles. Uh, so, yeah, we looked around and somehow I found a really battered old Land Rover in the middle of a field. There was a mouse living in the dashboard when I was there. It was full of <laughs> hay and chickens. Anyway, we dragged that thing home, uh, gave that a complete restoration. So that already gives you a really good start on, on, on the field with just steel and welding and manipulating metal and, and whatnot. This then brings me to my general drive is... It's, it's, it's not about why do you make this or, or, or I, I think I, I just can't help it. I just think I can make that. So I have to, <laughs> 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 and you can put a philosophy on this. Like I can buy stuff, but I won't learn anything. If I try to make it, I have it or or maybe if I, if, if, if I fail, <laughs> but, but also learn about it. And that's just the, the fun part. Uh, but that's also go with partially that it's, it's a, it's a bit compulsive to make things. So then, yeah, as I said, uh, getting into bicycles wasn't necessarily <laughs> my idea because back in the day, um, where I lived, 
there wasn't a lot of mountain biking around. Um, and I did have a mountain bike and I, 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 I took it to the, to the bike sparks in the summer. But yeah, I was, I think I was looking at, at a new bike and my roommate was, was standing behind me and uh, he, he said, hey, they're so expensive, man. Why don't you make them yourself? Yeah, and I literally thought, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it started, uh, thinking, uh, looking up uh, for like, suspension characteristics and, and, and whatnot. And then it still took a while for me to actually build something because I didn't have the, the, the well, the material or, 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 or the place. I mean, I can, I can, because <laughs> part of my journey also has to do with my, I mean, the journey in building things has to do with the journey in my life. So I'm originally from, from, from Belgium. Uh, it's fairly flat there. If I would be an avid ro road biker, I would have probably stayed because it's really nice to not have to pedal up. Um, but I've always wanted to get to, to the Alps. Uh, so my journey actually started in, uh, well, <laughs> the pre-alpine country of Austria. Uh, I, I could see the mountains in, in, in the distance, but I wasn't there yet. And then slowly I found my way uh, into, in, into Switzerland where I now live on the mountain. So <laughs> check. <laughs> and Goal then, achieved. Uh, yeah. Only since uh, like one or two years ago, I finally have a workshop with a lathe and a, and a, and a mill. And yeah, I've, I've got a workspace where I can, actually start making things because if you want to make full suspension bikes you need some machinery or well draw your your, your parts and have them made uh, a hardtail is, is pretty simple you need a jig you can buy the tubes you can cut the tubes with an angle grinder and a file stick them together with a welder or a, or, or, or a brazing but if we're talking full suspension you need some machining capability and yeah i guess that's what's holding me back also in making this well ultimate bike and yeah i would like you to describe this uh latest version of your enduro bike the uh the steel spring suspended version and then i have a follow-up question once i hear the details on this it was a kind of a surprise surprise design um the first full suspension bike i did uh had an upright shock at the at the seat post and so it had a flex pivot design so the, the the seat stays flex instead of having having a pivot and um i really like the look of a shock that's horizontal it looks i don't know some it looks kind of moto especially with a cold shock and um so i was working out some new pivot points and trying to combine uh some whatever yeah some some some, some linkage points whatever and all of a sudden i thought hey this part doesn't really turn much either. So I start shifting around the points and notice that I can cancel out another pivot point. And there you go. That design was born. And as far as I know, it's the first design that's like that. <laughs> should have taken to the, um, I should have uh, gotten a patent, right? Because it's the bicycle industry. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Give it a cool name. Does it have a cool name at least? Even if you don't have a patent. <laughs> uh, I think I coined it. Um, <laughs> wait, let me think. DFP, you know, dual flex pivot. Dual flex? Dang. Dual flex pivot. Yes. It's so specialized if you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> come it's at, taken, come at it's taken or, or <laughs> yeah. we should talk. <laughs> So you're looking at um, 65 degree head tube, uh, 160 mil travel, enduro type, or where where did you go with the? Oh yes, um, I started out with 160 millimeters on the front, 140 in the back, uh, and because <laughs> I don't know if many people realize this, it might be part of some some marketing strategy, but your vertical travel at the front is less because you have 160 times the sign of whatever your head tube angle is. And I thought, oh, I'll just match those. But then I must say, I ride around here, it's all very stony and hard. And I think I want more travel in the back. <laughs> it's like, I really loved riding my, my, my hardtail while I was living in a place that had a lot of forest where let's say your soil has a bit of give and makes grip. But if you ride in stony uh, environments, your bike needs to do all of the work. 
and and your legs also so yeah i feel kind of stupid to have not done this because the shock totally would allow it to make uh, 145 uh, 150 millimeters so i already changed that i made some some uh, little sheet metal parts that I initially uh, built in to be able to ride a shorter shock, an, an air shock that I had. So now I'm up to 145 millimeters. So yes, five more. <laughs> that makes all the difference. <laughs> uh, well, it does some, because another thing is a call shock has this bump stop at the back that also robs you of a couple of millimeters times your, your leverage rate is again, you're losing 10 millimeters at, at the back. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I um, I made my own bump stop now. That's a bit softer than the original. And then, yeah, we get to yet another project and another one and the list goes on. Because <laughs> making this is, for instance, one thing. For instance, I make this, uh, this new bumper and it's soft. But how soft? So I've got this list that keeps growing. And what's, for instance, this thing, I would like to measure how soft. So then I need to buy like a gauge that can measure this and then something to connect it to my computer and blah, blah, blah. And is it made yeah. of rubber or what is it made of? Yeah, it's polyurethane rubber. It's a, it's a casting. It's a two component casting thing. And the cool thing is uh, you have component A and B and C even. And depending on how you mix them, you get a harder rubber. So you mm. can kind of play with that. Okay. And, and, yeah, uh, but I mean, the, the measure is the durometer now, just like yes. the same as on the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this thing is, I think, a, whatever, a 40 shore or something. It's mm. it's a lot softer than the standard Cape Creek bumper, which is actually really hard. And I I think it robs you about... It, it's 10 millimeters thick, and it takes at least 5 millimeters off the shock. Mm. So you multiply this by 2.5, and, and that's what you lose at the back. So. And yeah. did you play around with the, the profile and also encasing the exterior diameter? Oh, um, yeah, I, the first one was a bit smaller, then I tried some ribs. But I, the thing is, I can't say I feel this. So that's why I want to measure it. It's more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to know. <laughs> and then, um, well, I would like to offer this to, to, to people. So if I can measure it, then I know what I'm selling. And then I can also specifically give this to people. I, I would also would like to run this with some, uh, some uh, what's it called, data re recording. Because mm. I don't want to sell just air or a piece of rubber. It should also work. And then I would be able to show you what it actually does. Yeah, but I mean, it stands to reason, right? That, uh, you know, riders of different weight classes would need different kind of rubber pieces to achieve yeah. the same result. Right? Exactly, so exactly. Even adjusted for the spring rate, right? Because they're yeah. obviously running a harder spring. Yeah, 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 and depending on how you ride. Yeah. If you try to, if you like to hug off things, maybe you wouldn't like something more mm. progressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of similar to, uh, I mean, the, the idea is kind of similar to what Formula does with their... Uh, what is it called? The CTS, the compression tune mm, yes, thing, yes, yes. right? So basically, they have their standard tune, and then they give you the whole set of like what is it, eight different, different yeah. um, valvings that you can change to your to your liking. So I mean, that's you know, it's always nice to to have the option. The the you know, the real question is what people actually do with it, right? So <laughs> generally, <laughs> yes, um, I would like to. <laughs> Like, I would like to know how many people actually feel all, all that things. There's the pros, they will definitely feel something. And then, I don't know, there's a lot of average riders who feel or don't feel it or think they would feel. And then mm. that could lead me to my next project. It's a bike where I can change a lot of things. So the spring kinematic, like the progressiveness has three different settings. The anti-squad has different settings. So I can try all that on one bike just to keep the parameters to a, to a minimum. And then I would like to prove to myself that, well, either I feel all this or I do not feel this. <laughs> Ideally, I do not feel anything and I can make the most simple bike ever because that's the best bike. Yeah, but then the, the bike industry cabal, they're going to come to your house and silence you. And not necessarily because <laughs> it's, it's personal, Change right? <laughs> 
no it's 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 just personal and then technically if i if if, if i were to offer bikes to to other people they could well if they're my size let's say they could write that thing and say oh I'm actually i do like the, the progressive setting more and then mm. okay we'll make you this frame if you like the linear setting more we'll make you this frame would be an interesting an interesting study to to look at all the frames that are out there that have all these different uh, flip chips and mutator things and uh, all the rest of it and uh, and actually do a survey and analysis on how people are actually using it. Can they actually tell a difference? Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and how much? How much are they actually changing it over time? Right. So it's kind of yeah. like. And yeah. when, if, if, and when they are changing it, I mean, I obviously know that Bryson is a, a very passionate tinkerer and, and flipper of chips, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, for myself, I know that once I've found my settings and I'm not going to, I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not changing anything, right? So as long as it works in the, the conditions I need, then I'm not changing anything. So, yeah. you know, your, your idea sounds like a great idea to me. I have one good idea for, and I would like to challenge any mountain bike magazine for this when this bike is done to come and we'll do some blind testing and let's mm. see if Mr. Magazine Tester can tell the difference. That would be yeah. the ultimate check. <laughs> There's definitely some people out there who are willing to take up your challenge. I hope they're listening. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, when it's done, I will definitely put it out there. And uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm down to, 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 to do this. It would be super interesting. I heard you say the word sell, but before we reach that point, I also heard two other keywords. Uh, one came from Pascal. That was uh, Chris Porter, Sir Porter, and the other one is uh, from yourself, Bram Moto. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Moto. one of the aspects I love about my bikes as well. It's like, and that's why I run the bike that I run. It's like, I feel it's like super, I feel like it's like a moto. And so when I'm motoring down the trail, <laughs> I get that feeling. And I like, I like have like flashbacks in my mind about like watching dudes like hit whoops and do all these things. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's me right now. Except, you know, I'm, I'm more or less bumbling, but, uh, that's part of the feeling of like having a bike. It's like maybe going through some bumps and everything and being like, yeah. <laughs> and do you make this sound to your, yourself or? No, I'm you, too busy. You, you like enjoy the silence. Teeth chattering and like <laughs> going, <"Whoa!" laughs> like getting freaked out. But, but speaking uh, about the moto feel, um, I suppose you guys have already ridden an, uh, an e-bike because that thing is planted. It's, it rides so much better. Even if your suspension is not how good the e-bikes they just go better over rough stuff, I find, because the chassis is heavier and in general. This dynamic for <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, have you read uh, Tony Fiol, Fiole? Fiol? Motorcycle yeah, Dynamics? Fiole. Yeah, yeah. Fiole? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is outlined in his in his as well. You know, it's the whole like mass balance between the bike oh, yeah, and the, and the yeah, wheels. Yeah. And it's for sure. You're, you're right. E bikes are going to handle way better, more composed on any of that stuff just because of that uh that difference until um, you see that tree that you want to bunny hop then you need to <laughs> pull 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 yeah. <laughs> um so e-bikes on your are on your mind or you're uh ste steering clear uh, let's say i used to be one of those people that thought oh e-bikes oh well, they're a bit stupid you know earn your turns but then if you think about it, if you ever take a shuttle or, or a lift or anything, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's a bit hypocritical, isn't it? <laughs> and so my e-bike journey started uh, when I started working for Scott as an e-bike design engineer. And then I first rode e-bikes and one, two, three, sold. <laughs> Those things are awesome. <laughs> take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, one downside I find of e-bikes is, and I had the experience, uh, the engine stopped working with not too many kilometers. Uh, it was just over two years. Oh, I'm sorry, there's no warranty anymore. And then it's not a bottom bracket that you buy. <laughs> it's a motor. <laughs> so I'm a bit wary about their reliability. Uh and that brings me then to the next thing. It would be cool if I could get a motor and put it in a steel frame because, believe me, I have designs. <laughs> but then we're still talking about reliability and me, me personally, not necessarily trusting them. 
So I don't know. At some point on my list, there is some self-built motor with everything. So again, that if it breaks, that it's my fault and I can fix it. Uh, but yeah, the list is long and you only have that much time, but yeah, I definitely enjoy e-bikes and yeah, they're a slightly different sport. Mm -hmm. It's also really great that you can turn them uphill on the hardest tracks or, or, or trails and think, can I do that? <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> trial type, uh, riding. It really helps with technical climbing and it gives you a good workout too. No, no matter Many what, what you do, I find so. Yeah, yeah. Like people people bash them the whole time, but they're really great for that. Uh, your your description of a, a motor inside of a steel frame reminds me a little bit of this company from France. Uh, they make an LMX. Have you heard? Of, have you seen that bike? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, it started out as just like a pure moto, and then they now offer like a pedal assist type of version. And they do have a throttle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to pedal. <laughs> no, you don't have to. <laughs> that seems that seems that seems pretty fun though. It does. Yeah. Um, then yeah. you go up into a whole other you know thing where you have to worry about being legal on yeah places exactly. and yeah. I mean, are we even cycling anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, okay, so let's switch back. You, you mentioned the word sell. Yes. There are many frame builders making steel bikes, selling their, selling their bikes. Starling is an example. Like actually, quite quite good acclaimed bikes. Um, have you thought about what sets you apart and how you want to approach that, or if you want to approach that? Yeah, from the beginning on, um, I thought of it. <laughs> I haven't really gotten to it other than I made uh, two bikes, no, three bikes for friends. But it would be nice to be able to do it. Um, I really like the Starling ones and he did a really good job and he's one of the biggest now, I, I would say. Some others are, well, I mean, he's definitely on the on the forefront and the way he's doing it re really works. But then, yeah, it seems that the market is, well, getting quite full maybe. Um, and then to set yourself apart, it might get hard. What I would like to do is I have some other layouts in mind too. So I wouldn't just commit myself to one layout. Um, for instance, I've got this, well, the first bike I made this, the C4, it's quite pr progressive. It has the, the vertical shock. I can make it quite light. Then there's the one I have now. And then for some reason, when I see a bike, common cell type, you know, with the top, the top tube shock, they're also really beautiful. So I'm thinking, oh, I want to make one of those, but it also gives a different um, linkage ratio characteristic so part of me wants to be able to offer all those and then kind of make the bike for the customer. So a, a, a very personal approach instead of this is the geometry and pick, pick some, something. And I think that's what could set me apart to, yeah, be a bit more, a, a bit closer to, to, to the customer because I do really enjoy making things and, and, it comes together with the challenge and not having to make the same thing over and over again, even though that's the better idea in terms of time, <laughs> because setting up something new takes more time and yeah, definitely doesn't go faster. All right. It all, de all depends what you want, right? So yeah, there's also a lot of niche products, exactly like Pascal mentioned. It's, it's, you can also do like a uh, mobility bikes and stuff like that. Like there's, I mean, it, there's lots of people with different ideas of what they want for mm -hmm. mobility and, uh, or what they need, let's say, if, uh, compared to their, their physical attributes. And uh, they're looking for people to, to get a solution. So yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if there's a channel to, to, yeah, to connect with those kinds of people. But because um, more, more of these like um, paraplegic bikes, for example, are, are mm -hmm. coming up the yes. as well. So... I mean, more linkages, more, more wheels. Idea. Yeah, I love like, it. I'm, love I'm, it. Sure, I'm sure you can generate a lot more ideas <laughs> once, you, once you like steer yeah. yourself into that category. Yeah, but in order to develop this, then personally, time wise, and then what that thing has to cost, that is, yeah, that is high, I would say. Because developing a bike takes a while and then making it. And yeah, part of 
making a bike is the jigs and there's there's a lot more that comes comes to play but it would be a really nice challenge to to make one of those bikes uh is there a, a greater vision rather than just saying, well, I can make it, therefore I go and make it? Is there a greater vision for what you want to do in terms of SR cycles? I mean, obviously not like your entire life because no one knows, but um, for SR cycles, is there a greater vision where, where you want to take it? Well, what do you mean by revision? Vi uh, just a vision, oh, vision of like, vision. Oh. if, uh, you know, kind of what... So yes, you talked about, yes, you have the ideas, you have different designs, you have the ones that you've developed, you want to make it for customers, but it's kind of like, right now, it's kind of like uh, a little bit of everything, but nothing really, right? So it's kind of like, if mm -hmm. you want to spin this around, it's like, okay, look, what I really want to do is just make the wildest functional steel mountain bikes that are made in Switzerland and they're highly personalized. Or do you want to be like a contract fabricator that, uh, you know, people can just show up at uh, your shop and say like, hey, I really like how this bike looks. Can you make me one of those just in steel? And, you know, you make it. And maybe you change the angles here a little bit. That's a good idea also. Yeah, I like <laughs> so I, well, I, ideally, I offer what I've made myself um, and for myself and tested it myself because then I know it will work. But if somebody comes to me and says, uh, I want this bike in steel or something more special, I can obviously do it. But again, it will have to come at a certain price because that is a lot of work. The bikes that I make, I do for m well me and for my pleasure. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's always my, 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 my pleasure. But uh, if there's people like that and they have the money, please. I'd love to do that, <laughs> but yeah. I think I think it's it's just money-wise that it's almost not feasible to do. Well, a really crazy thing. That's why I'd like to base it on on whatever I've already done and mm. try it out. Um, yeah. yeah, but I mean, a bit, uh, personally, uh, I believe there is a market for you know very tailor-made, very good designs, right? That are made here in Switzerland. And where you can talk to the fabricator and you can have a conversation about what dreams this mm -hmm. uh, bike should be enabling. Um, and we've talked to people that, have, that are doing that right now, right? So and you're, you're, not, you're not alone in this. So I think it's just a matter of, uh, you know, so verb verbalizing that vision a little bit for yourself where, where you really want to go. Because I think like with that F5, for example, I mean, I looked at that and it was like, that is a really, really good looking bike and it makes a ton of sense. And, uh, you know, why not? That, you know, that looks great. And it's a great story and uh, it's, it's really, really good. And I think you would have to, the skills and, uh, and the knowledge and the capacity to, you know, if someone instead of a 65 degree head angle, they wanted 63 and a half or if they wanted whatever it is five yeah, millimeters yeah. more reach and all these kind of things right those things you can accommodate right but yes that's, that's that's all possible it's more about the basic layout and the rest is changeable like the the the, the geometry is the easiest thing to change let's say within limits so obviously yeah, for sure it's more about the let's say the suspension system that needs to work a certain way mm -hmm. but yeah you just freeze those points and the rest you extend and it will it will work well, I think you should get one of those bikes out to some testers and then uh, see if it how it holds up. <laughs> well, yeah, the the next bike is for another buddy of mine who rides really hard, and um, I've been promising a bike for, for for a long time, and he's been waiting for a long time. And uh, I think he unconsciously put a little bit of pressure on me. He said, "Oh, it's going to be the last bike I get," so. He's saying it, <laughs> you, it should you better hold. make it worthwhile. Yeah, Extra it should guys, hold it's... forever. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna work out, and I would be really, really happy to see him ride that thing. So, are you gonna do one in a size medium? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah, his bike will be an XL. <laughs> oh wow! Well, I'll, I'll take a large. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Are you? Um... I mean, that's you know always one of my, my questions. Are you doing all of this by yourself? Or are you really just, you're sitting on your mountain 
in your in your shop and you don't talk to anyone else or are you are you exchanging ideas thoughts is there like a group of you know fellow minded people that that you exchange ideas with or how does that work for you there's not necessarily a a fixed group but when i see something interesting uh, on, on instagram like i follow a ton of frame builders Mm. And I get inspired by them. And I hope by putting out my stuff that I might inspire other people too. Oh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> that's the extent of just exchanging knowledge or, or hey, how, how did you do, do this? Or does that work with the bearings like this? Stuff stuff like this. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I guess I'm uh, alone on my mountain here, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Yeah, sometimes ask a question here, get a question answered here. Uh, yeah. Would I be right to assume SR is um, like a side project type of type of dealio for you? Oh yes, uh, my my main job is is so as a consultant, I well now work together with a, a niche racing motorcycle company uh, that I well I'm I'm in a supporting role there for d d designing parts of, of 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 motorcycles. Let's say. Oh. Nice. Uh, some more moto naming but um <laughs> back to the back to sr oh yeah by the way we gotta talk about the name yes the name yeah what happened what happened uh it's it's very simple bryson you've been in switzerland for a while right can you yeah. pronounce the original name i can yes i would say it's schwarz rot Yes. So now go out there to anyone who's not a German speaker, show them the word. That person's going to say, there's just consonants in, in there. How do I pronounce this? So let, 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 let's, let's say originally, I, I, I said as, as a child, um, I played with, with Legos. Most of those creations somehow, they were in black and red. I restored that, I, I restored that moped. Um, I don't know why, but I painted it and it was black with some red. I took two months of, well, I wouldn't have to say Photoshopping, but it was more something like paint. So it took two months for me to decide on colors. Guess what colors the Land Rover were? Black and red. So at some point when I had to choose a name, I thought, you know, I'm just going to call my creations black and red. <laughs> uh, I was in, in a German speaking country. I mean, I, I li lived in Austria at the moment. And I really like the ling of Schwarzrot. Uh, although a lot of people of that the German speaking, they say, ha ha, Schwarzbrot, that's a better name. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then I've got this, uh, I've got this, it, well, it, I think it was a, a friend of mine. He's, he's a guide in, in France and he's writing a hard tale. I built, built for him. And um, well, he runs into French people and they say, oh, What's that brand? So it kind of already rang a bell back then that even though I think it's a cool sounding name, there's not a lot of people that can, well, first of all, read it and pronounce it. And that stayed in the back you know, of my head. And uh, yeah, I got thinking, I really like the logo. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it's an S and an R. So, huh, how about SR? <laughs> And then that took a bit of convincing and yeah, here we go. It's a bit, it's shorter. I guess everybody can pronounce it. It doesn't really mean anything. And well, with, let's say the future, let's say in the future, I would like to offer the, the, these things for real. Then uh, yeah, it's easier to brand this or, yeah, I mean, it's just easier to communicate. Mm. And yeah, right now by looking at it for a while, I really like it too. So, and it keeps the core. I mean, it keeps the essence of what it originally was. You know, there you go. I mean, black and red are scientifically proven the fastest colors there are. Right? And yeah. the official go faster colors. <laughs> okay, I don't know, but yeah. I mean, you're I, a moto guy. You you first. <laughs> I do like him. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> You said you uh, you follow a bunch of other frame builders on on the socials. Yes. Who do you look up to? Huh. Look up to I. I who inspires you? Yes. 
Well, first of all, I, I look up to people or I admire people that just do stuff without thinking too much about it. Or at least it seems like they, they, they do. I don't want to, I don't want to judge, but, um, for instance, uh, like scar cycles, he's, a, he, he's a chef and he just said, I'm just going to do this. Well, respect, man, respect, you know? <laughs> um, so I like his work and, and, um, you know, Egeri in France, yeah, he's yeah. kind of gotten, I guess, more famous because of Paul Aston. Uh, I love both of their work. Like the Egeri are beautiful frames, uh, simple, beautiful single pivots, mostly. Um, oh, who else do we have? Well, Starling bikes, obviously, they're just nicely built. And then, uh, I don't know where they're from. You know, Devlin Cycles? Yeah. Australia. Australia. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to just scroll through my, <laughs> uh, yeah. through my whatever following oh, no, list. There's so it's, many. It's, 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 it's huge. Mm. Um, but I, yeah, what, what I really like is the ones that try also some, some weirder stuff maybe, or just, I, I, I mean, I think it was Devlin. He made a rocker link just out of these tiny tubes, and that looked really nice. I thought mm, interesting. But then, for instance, I follow uh, guys in the, uh, well, mostly in America, that make these huge off-road trucks, and I take inspiration from from that too. Or these custom motorcycle builders, uh, even though you can't really always follow that because they will carve up a ten millimeter thick piece of steel and make something beautiful out of it, but. The, I'm not a weight weenie, but <laughs> heavy. Yeah, <laughs> there's a limit. There, there, there's definitely a limit, but yeah, be- beautiful things, and you just try to take an inspiration from from this and see, huh? Maybe I can do something with, with this. Preston, do you got anything else? I have, a, I have a thought experiment. If we can try to go over it on the pod. So, in terms of like all of your hundreds of designs that you have floating around, and also on a sketchbook and everything. What do you think would be like the best way to approach to get them all made? Like as soon as possible, but also balancing as best as possible, like most true to your design and well constructed. Do you know somebody with a lot of money? You should just give it to me, then I'll have to work and then I can get working. <laughs> That's no, the I'm, fastest well, I mean, way. I mean, um, <laughs> exterior from yourself, because like you have a, you know, you have a finite, finite amount of time, right? Yes. So Sadly. You, did you ever, did you ever think about that? Like, you know, like you, you have so many ideas and you're like, how can I just get them like made? And so I can like verify. I think my mind's not structured enough. So that's why I'm not doing that. And that's why I can't do that, I guess. But so I talked about my next bike. I've, I've posted some pictures of the front frame already. The rear frame is still in uh, progress. It's it's the one that I can adjust, right? A lot of things on. And well, this is still that enduro bike I wanted to build in whatever, when I started thinking about this in uh, whatever, 10 years ago. I still haven't built it because I always think, oh, I should test this first. Oh, I should test this first. So I still have not built the bike that I initially set out for to build. But now with this version, it will be the the before last, but that's also not true. I'm just lying to myself. Exactly. You're just going to find some more projects to do first. Yeah, but th- th- this one should show me what I like most. Well, whether or not I feel this, by the way, because I want to make the simplest bike for what I need, let's say. Do I need more anti-rise? Do I need less anti-rise? Do you feel the anti-squat? What head angle do I want? Do I actually need a, a, a progressive suspension? Because if you ask the bike industry, well, they don't concur. Some say you need a linear one. Some say, oh, you need a progressive one. And then we can discuss about what people think is progressive. <laughs> and it goes on. So in the end, I just want to know what's right for me and then what looks good. If you were to make like a suite of assumptions except for like one parameter and then make that bike. Do you, how close do you think it would be to being that kind of perfect enduro? Well, I can't say that what I'm writing now writes badly, you know, cause I really love it. So 
it's good. But so was my my C4, like the small down country bike, let's call it. And that was very pro- progressive. <laughs> but yeah, it's really difficult to just pinpoint it. And, and, and again, I really wonder if I could feel it or, or, or not. And that's just mm-hmm. what I want to try out. So that's also I'm my... probably good on any bike. But what feels really good is I made this bike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Going back to Pascal's first question. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's... I also made, I also braced a bike. and Yeah, it, the hardtail, it, right? Yeah, it, it feels great to ride it. I'm actually very astonished every time I ride it that it yeah. turned out as it did because, I mean, it was the first thing I didn't learn. I learned it the week before I made it. Yeah, and no. I'm, yeah I'm just kind of like, I'm pretty impressed. Like, it's not like the best bike ever, but it's... It's dang good. Yeah, for sure. For a bunch of steels, well, it's tubes put together. Yeah. It's mostly about the tires, though. <laughs> You're crazy for a hardtail. <laughs> well, it's only the tires, right, on, on a hardtail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and a bit of fork, but the end's going to go where it wants to go. <laughs> I, you know, that's, that's not the point. Sometimes you need to go where things are going and not where you want to go, right? So that's... <laughs> That's, that's part of riding a bike. That's that's how it goes. Yeah, but that's also maybe a little bit of a philosophy difference. So I've got this guide friend, and he always talks about, oh, I want my I want my bike to be playful and not stuck to the ground and everything. But I think it is possible to have a good bike with very important good suspension, mo- probably tuned to to the rider that will stick you to the floor. But if you want, you can get off it. If you have a bike that well, let's say the geometry is fine, but the suspension's all over the place. Yeah, you're going to have one hell, hell of a ride trying to, to hold on, but that's all it's going, going to be. It's not going to be your, your choice. So I think there is this, this, there's definitely, there must definitely be the, this balance of having something that will hold a line. And, well, if you want to take it offline, it's obviously possible. I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, again, it's one of those variables <laughs> yeah. that are getting thrown around, but good luck measuring playful. How, how do you, yeah. can you please create a device that measures playful? <laughs> can you turn the playful up a bit? Uh, <laughs> right? yeah, I think it's you, should, of... you should ask an, uh, an, an app developer. <laughs> and yeah, they exactly. Also just put something on, on, on your head tube and then there you go. <laughs> it's a flip chip for that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Is there uh, anything else you wanted to add to the conversation? Yeah, there's something I would just like to say to, to let's say, people that are thinking about, I want to build a bike, or maybe you're not. Or sometimes um, I see questions of mostly young people maybe starting their, 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 their studies or something, and they always ask, oh, how do I get into the bicycle industry fastest, or what should I do? And to them, I would just say, well, first of all, just do it. An engineering study or background definitely helps. But most and foremost, just start doing it and experimenting and don't just rely on uh, somebody teach me something. Just try to f- f- figure it out and you can you can get there. Start doing 3D, start getting some practical uh, experience and should work out. Exactly. Just make yourself, my dad's my, my favorite recommendation. Uh, I, I once received when I was getting started in my previous career and that I happily passed on to everyone else that uh, asked me for advice in their career, I said, just make yourself useful. And generally, that's, uh, that's how you get on with uh, whatever you're trying to do. And, uh, you know, if you are an engineer and you can figure out whatever 3D modeling software to make a bike, that's great. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's other things you can do to be in the, the industry you want or the job you want or, you know, just, yeah. again, make those connections and... Uh, talk to people and be useful <laughs> i think these are great pieces of advice you know the landscape has changed a lot uh, in the last few whatever 10 or 15 20 years it's no longer only people qualified as an engineer that can make something you can learn anything on youtube you can yeah, exactly learn <laughs> from people just by talking to them and and then take bits from here and there and start welding tubes together and if you yeah. go about it in a kind of procedural or cautious way, understand if it's going to break before you really like take it on a crazy ride. You know, it's yeah. 
there's just some yeah. things you need to think about first and the education is out there. It's not like before, like where it was locked behind a textbook at a high, high, high price university. Mm, no. Secret yeah. handshakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and you also see this on, on how many people just built their own steel bike in their garage or something. And even, I mean, steel, I say steel, but there's a lot of people tinkering with carbon. Uh, <laughs> crazy <laughs> enough, <laughs> crazy <laughs> enough. Because it's also really nice, but uh, yeah. It seems sometimes more work because you first need to figure out how to make the molds and you don't even have a bike yet. <laughs> Technically, you know, if you work with steel, you buy a tube, you you, you cut it and you weld it, boom. You're already you got pretty something close. already. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't have to make the tube. <laughs> but you, you kind of have to like uh, round or roundish shapes. And they're kind of straight unless you buy a bender, but yeah. <laughs> They're not cheap. No. <laughs> and if you just want to make one bike, but yeah, people should just do it. No, but no better time than now. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, if our listeners have any more questions about SR Cycles, formerly Schwarz Rot, where can they find you? Um, well, for now, I'm, uh, let's say, just on Instagram. It's at SR Cycles. And... Uh, well, my email is srcycles at gmail.com. And I will most likely, most likely, be working on a website that uh, will most likely come out this, this fall. Just do <laughs> nice. it. Just do it. Just get on with it. Yes. But you for can now, do it. <laughs> Instagram is the way to go. Uh, all right. Sweet. We will put all of that information into the show notes um, under this episode so people can find it there. And with that, I say thank you very much for your time. That was really, really interesting and really, really cool chat. And I hope to see you in person sometime soon. Yeah, thank you for the, uh, for the interest and the opportunity. It was, it was really fun. And uh, I, I do hope it is, it is interesting. And uh, yeah, I mean, if anybody's in the region of uh, Valais, just shout out and we'll go for, for a ride. Thanks for listening. We really hope you enjoyed this episode. Why don't you let us know what you think? We really like to hear from our listeners. To find out how to get in touch with us, follow the links to our website in the description or find us on Instagram under at Skits and Giggles. Until next time, Skigglers.